They say on the tour of Corsica that the only straight bit of tarmac on the island is the runway to Jaxio Airport. You can certainly believe it if you drive on the winding roads banked by perilous sheer drops that cross this Mediterranean island. On paper, it's quite a short event and held entirely on tarmac. But the road surface is coarse and bumpy, and don't forget those mountain drops. Words like unforgiving are often applied to Corsica, with good reason. Hello there and welcome back once again to some more WRC. Today we're continuing our Let's Play. This is episode 26. In today's episode, we are taking a look at the French Rally, aka Corsica, on the professional difficulty. Okay, so here we are in France with our Hyundai accent. That is as loud as it usually is, but it sounds louder than normal. Speaking of stuff sounding differently, you'll have to let me know in the comment section what you think of the mic quality in this episode because uh, it turns out I've been a bit stupid. I've figured out two things today. Uh, one of them is stupid on something else's part and one of them is stupid on my behalf. So I've had this Blue Yeti now for I think about eight months, something like that. I used to use snowballs and I've never really been massively impressed with the Yeti's audio quality. For me, it just doesn't sound particularly right. Uh, it always sounded a little bit more tinny than the Snowball did. However, it turns out I might have been a bit stupid, which isn't the first time that's ever happened. Um, I, I had an inkling just to look at a Yeti review, because I've sort of thought it a few times. I'm like, I've got the microphone tilted directly to my mouth, as I usually would. Uh, essentially tilted downwards because the Yeti has like an axis movement thing and I was like the only way the only reason they'd let it be movable is if the noise cones coming from the top right but it turns out uh, the receptors for this might actually be in the side of it or rather directly where the power button is which I've fought before and it does make sense but I've never really played around with it all that much, however, today I decided just to give it a whirl and uh, yeah, it seems to pick up a lot more audio and also it doesn't sound quite as tinny to my ears. Again, uh, let me know in the comment section if you've watched any previous videos what you think compared to this one, if it's better, but uh, yeah, I think I'm probably going to leave it like this for a little while just to let that sink in. Uh, the other thing I've realised is YouTube doesn't say uh, 720p is HD anymore. Which confused me because I'd like uploaded a bunch of videos and it was like, why is 720p not coming up as HD? I checked it and apparently, according to YouTube, even though it technically is high definition, YouTube doesn't think 720p is quite high definition enough anymore. So, that's interesting. To be honest with you, I've been thinking about changing to 1080p for a while. The new PC rig can pretty easily deal with 1080. Uh, it's just sort of a thing I do for file sizes and stuff but at the same time I've got a external hard drive so it shouldn't be too much of an issue so I might start doing 1080. I'm not going to do it in this series. Uh, Forza 4 might see a switch halfway through uh, but I think for whatever the next game is after this that might be in 1080 or it might not and I'm just talking complete bollocks. It doesn't really matter because this game is going to run in 480p 25 frames per second regardless because it's being ran on a PAL machine. Anyways, we got second through that, I'm not really going to discuss all that too much because we're going to head straight into the second stage and hope our fortunes change. Okay, stage number two. I've forgotten a lot of Corsica. From what I remember, the Corsica rally is a lot of... It's a weird one, it's like a tarmac -y. Excuse me. It is a tarmac rally, but they give us gravel tyres for whatever reason, because it's, like, not very good. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not very good tarmac, so... Yeah, a little bit of a weird rally. Don't remember that much of it, other than... I'm assuming it's probably the twistiness of Spain... Well, sorry, the twistiness of Italy with a little bit less traction uh, in general. Either way, we're being beaten by Mackinan by 
uh, almost three seconds I think it is, so hopefully we can get uh, some pace up a little bit. Still being beat by Mackinnon. Apparently that might be uh, the thing here. It's just a bit weird, the uh, the Mac once again seems to be doing well, considering from all I can read on the internet, the French rally was pretty much dominated by the French. Uh, this was essentially the stage where Peugeots came into their own. Same with the Citroëns, actually, I believe. Uh, Citroën might have been more of a overall tarmac one, the Peugeot might have been slightly more all rounded. I do remember the Citroen, I mean obviously the Citroens were good anyway because they dominated the rally for god knows how many years but um, yeah from what I remember the Citroens were more tarmac orientated, they enjoyed the tarmac a lot because they're very very nimble but uh, yeah those Citroens though as much as they did dominate rally they did need the right sort of driver to deal with them. From what I've heard uh, uh, said and even by people like Colin McRae and stuff, the Citroen Zara was a car that was like, it was a very hard car to drive because it didn't want to drive like a traditional rally car, because of course McRae and most other rally drivers of this time, uh, not entirely, uh, well it's pretty much entirely unlike what happens today, is a lot of the drivers of then wanted to throw the cars around. You know, they like the whole drifting round corners sort of thing. The Citroen didn't want to do that. <clears throat> the Citroen was very much like driving an actual like race car on a race course when it came to the way it drew over. It was very sort of grippy and so on. Which is basically how modern rally cars drive. You know, in a modern rally, you're not supposed to be drifting the car around and all the rest of it, it's uh, a lot more technical, you know, they have the huge aero kits and stuff for the cars. I'm still down on fucking Mackinac. Although Gronholm seems to be uh, rising up the ranks a little bit as well. He was, I don't remember Gronholm really coming into it much in the uh, normal playthrough. Well, I could be wrong. To be fair, this is the exact same stage I'm with at at the uh, TRE Extra's normal playthrough, but for whatever reason I've decided to uh, continue this playthrough of it today. I'd probably finish off the playthrough's normal play tomorrow. Although I'm probably going to try and get the TRE playthrough's hard one done before I record the finale of this, if that makes sense. 3.46 seconds. Yeah, this seems to be a very uh, Mackinac dominated rally so far. Which isn't good. Because usually through the first few stages, the game will at least like try and give me some support and be like, Hey, you know, this guy's only this far away, but now I'm six seconds away. Although I'm falling into Richard Burns crasps as well. Kenneth Erickson isn't too far behind. I swear I'll look at the results eventually, but I'm just sort of hoping we beat the Mac first. Stage number three, and we have got some rain. That usually means bad things when it comes to the hard difficulty, but we shall see. Hopefully we can start getting some pace up, because uh, Mackin's concerning me slightly at the moment. I would like to get this rally won, because... I mean, to be fair, points-wise, I think we're pretty much through at this point. But, um, you know... I want to get some decent point holes in. Australia should be pretty much a cakewalk. Rally Great Britain, we are, of course, uh, probably not going to win because uh, someone called Richard Burns sort of kind of exists, and Richard Burns sort of kind of owns the entirety of the Welsh stage. So that's probably going to be a miss from us, but uh, we shall see. I don't even know. I do, like I've said before, I want to get a Rally Great Britain wing under my belt at some point. Even if it will be a case of where I'm just going to have to play as Richard Burns to try and get him knocked out the championship standings. I will do it, I swear. My goal is to try and unlock at least all the bonus stages, but uh, I'm not quite sure how many more rallies involve that. No, in my luck, it'll be this rally and uh, Rally Great Britain that have the uh, the other two bonus stages. Because I've actually got four of them, I think, which is a pretty good haul. That's actually more uh, than Rhino had, I think. I think he only had three uh, at the end of his playthrough. But, yeah, it's... Uh, 
I don't want to say I'm in a battle with him, but I, I, I feel like... Oh, yes, I do remember this stage, actually. The, France is the, uh, the stage that has quite a lot of frame rate drop. Yes, I do remember that part of it, actually. I just sort of noticed that it was coming through there. Yeah, I, it could be my disc, because this disc does look incredibly worn. In fairness, I did buy this game off eBay for £2.23. If you know the seller, you know the seller. Uh, there was no instruction manual with this one. So, And actually, if you want some more interesting uh, little tidbit, this game was actually the last one to arrive of all the WRC games I bought. I think in order I got WRC 4, 2, Rally of Old, 3, and then 1. Uh, and 1 actually came about a week later than everything else. Because uh, if I haven't told you the story before, essentially I ended up on eBay one night. And I decided I wanted to get rid of 35 quid really quickly. So I bought all of the PS2 WRC games. I bought Colin McRae, I bought Colin McRae 1 and 2, I already owned a Colin McRae 1, but uh, there is actually, if I ever LP Colin McRae 1, I will let you know about this, there is actually a very interesting little difference when it comes to CMR uh, 1. If you get the Values Edition, which is also known as the North American release, they moved the date of all the rallies up from 1998, which is when the original game came out, to 2000, which is when it came out in America, and also uh, when the Greatest Hits value version came out. And also, McRae's car actually looks different in uh, that version. They updated the Impreza from the sort of more traditional blue Subaru livery from the 555... Uh, style livery that I had before. I don't think it was a 555 livery in 98, but it was like, um, it wasn't the Stars of Pelodies, it had the little sort of, they're really hard to explain, it's like sort of the moons on it, which I think were supposed to be 555 and like some subliminal messaging campaign, which of course we've seen happen before in Formula One and stuff with the whole Marlboro bar uh, barcodes and stuff like that, so. Okay, that was good. That was a very, very good stage. The frame rate drops might have helped us there. We were four seconds up on that last stage as well. So, alright, I'm happy with that. That gives me some slight modicum of hope for the future. Only slight, but it does give me some... Also, I, I, it's peaking now. I'm used to being so close to it, but it's peaking. It's very strange. I'll, I'll get used to this eventually. So stage 3, McRae, McAdam, Burns, Gronholm, Ericsson and Signs. Pretty much as you'd expect this game to be the entire way through, but of course it hasn't been because Burns has been down. Uh, so we are only 0.35 seconds away from Mackinnon, then Burns. Kenneth Ericsson's in fourth, so uh, maybe the France is a bit of a Hyundai stage. Also, this is the one sponsored by PlayStation, uh, PlayStation 2. I forgot about that. Okay, stage number 4. Let's see how well Three, this goes. Two, one, go. Hoping for some good results, one but uh, if WRC has taught us anything, it's that it's cruel and unforgiving. Well, actually, it's not that at all, because it's actually a pretty easy game for what it is. Uh, the later games can be described as that, though. No, what WRC 1 has taught us is that uh, expect the unexpected. And if you think you're safe, you're never safe, because... One of the drivers could all of a sudden turn out to have a, I don't know, two JZ equipped rally car. Old me. Anyways, gotta go for that low hanging fruit, you know what I'm saying? That's uh, uh I mean, it, it's realistic that I would go. Over the fence? I'm just a little bit doubtful as to why, because I, I thought it would be an invisible wall to stop that happening. Okay, well, at least the game resettles, which is good. Trust me, I know what the later games are like. They certainly don't have invisible walls there. I just expected this game to have that. But, uh, yeah, no, the... Uh, the next few games certainly 
do not have that level of forgiveness. I mean, hell, I think WRC 2, you actually get a penalty for not driving exactly into the centre of the time gates. If you go around the time gate, you get a five second penalty, which I'm sure will amass a fair few of those in our playthrough. I'm not even joking when I say I don't even know if I'm actually going to be able to complete WRC 2 on professional mode. I'm being perfectly straight. I mean, I, I'm probably going to win a rally or two. I can probably win, like, Sweden and... Uh, there's probably another easy one in there somewhere. But, um, yeah. I don't quite know how I'm actually going to beat the entire competition. That will be a bit of a nail-biter. I've played a little bit of WRC3, that seems a lot simpler, uh, probably by virtue of what motor vehicle I'm selecting for that. We are 19 seconds down, are you fucking kidding me? There's no way that was accurate. I know I went through that fence at the start, but come on. Don't get me wrong, that was slow through there because I'm not in the middle. This is where rally games usually get me, is... Um, You've sort of got to drive directly in the middle to sort of not be slowing down at all. And that's usually where I fall down, so. Because I'm not a very good driver. I'd say in games, but to be honest with you, in real life, I'm not exactly great either. But then again, if you tell someone to go fuck themselves enough in real life, you know, I feel like that makes you a better driver. Unless I have an incredible final sector, I think this rally might be a throwaway. I got close, but uh, if I'm going to be 11 seconds behind Mackinnon, there's no way in God's green I'm going to be able to do it. I got very, very lucky there. <laughs> to be honest with you, that shouldn't have... If I shouldn't have flown through that fence at the start, in fairness, I probably shouldn't have survived that. That should have been a straight off the cliff DNF, but apparently it wasn't. Come on, come on, come on. Don't be 11 seconds, don't be 11 seconds. Four seconds. I can deal with four seconds. Although I feel like that's got to be another... It's seven seconds up in both those last two sectors. That felt slow, but... Mm. If, I didn't fly, fly, yeah, if I didn't fly through that fence, I'd have probably been pretty well in the points there, but... We shall see. I got beaten by Richard Burns, but we are four seconds away from Mackinnon heading into the final stage. Wish us luck. But will luck be enough? That's the real question. It is a night stage. Three, so... Two, one, go. I think... I could be wrong. I think I drove the stage earlier. Because, spoiler alert, I did do once again. Uh, like with the last two. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't paying any level of attention while I did it. But uh, I was getting the thumbnails earlier, so I might have played the stage because I'm fairly certain one of the, my thumbnails are at night. And it's probably this stage because I couldn't think of anything interesting to... Was it the Italian stage I did at night? I don't remember, actually. It's either Italy or this I did at night just because I couldn't be asked to... Yeah, it must have been this because I couldn't think of anything interesting visually that differentiates this stage from any of us. I mean, I guess the fact that it's a tarmac rally on not really tarmac is something, kind of, but not really. So, it's a pain in my arse, I know that's what this rally is, but... Because, like I think I've said before, the only thing I remember about these is uh, an old empty box video where it's like, yep, the, uh, the Spanish stages in Dirt Rally are good because they are a lot like the French stages in Richard Burns Rally and what I would do is drive at a tree 120 miles an hour to uh, end the French Rally stages and that's exactly what I do in Spain and to be honest with you I agree with them to a certain extent because I can't stand Tarmac Rally I've spoken about my disdain for Tarmac Rally before even though according to this game I'm quite good at it but we should never really listen to this game. It doesn't know what it's talking about. It's all lies. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, high second gear. Um, 
Yeah, right what did I say? Four seconds to Mackinnon? 2.93 up. I, I've got a sneaking suspicion this is going to be one of those where we're very, very close, but no cigar on this. I really think that's going to be it. But we shall see, won't we? It ain't over till the fat Hyundai crosses over the finish line. It's not really a fat Hyundai. The new i 20 is a bit poorly looking, but uh, in that right sense, she was a sleek looking beast she was. A car not hindered by any form of safety regulations, you know, they designed it exactly what they they wanted. A real go-getter was the 2001 Hyundai. I mean, the Rally car looked cool. I've always kind of liked the uh, the Hyundai Rally car. I'm not a Hyundai person, but I like the the Rally car a fair bit. You know, it's it's kind of, it's just sort of mental looking because you know what the normal. It's like the 206. It looks nothing at all like the road going variant, and that's why it's kind of cool. Come on, yes, fucking get in there. <laughs> oh. that was gonna start looking like I was gonna look like a complete twat. Uh, I still look like a complete twat, but at least I'm a twat, that's one- There you go, I'm going crazy. I'm going crazy chasing after fucking Mackinnon. Alright, that's another secret code stage done. I kind of wanted a special stage, but never mind. A win's a win, I certainly will take another rally win. So, we were overall two seconds up on Tommy Mackinnon, just pipping it at the end like he kind of did in Finland. Uh, Kenneth Ericsson gets fourth though, which is a good haul for Hyundai. Uh, Piero's still, you know, useless, but he is what it is. We've won the PlayStation 2 rally. So, the current driver standings, we are 106 points. Uh, well, we have 106 points. We're 56 points up on Tommy Mackinnon, uh, who has taken over Carlos Sainz. They're still having a little battle, five points between them. Now, Richard Burns is on 30 points now. Uh, which is actually pretty good for him. Ford Drive picks up another point. Freddie Loic stays in six, and Marcus Gronholm. Oh, that. Oh wow, Gronholm, Loic, Gronholm, and Ericsson are all tied. So we could actually see. Can we get? I hope. I don't think it's going to happen. But if Ericsson can get top six, that'd be incredible. Uh, Hyundai gets 13 points from that, so we end up getting 118 points, beating up Ford by 68 points. Mitsubishi's on 65. Subaru on 41. Peugeot is on 13, Skoda is on 7, and Citroen is still on Natin. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching. Next time we'll be taking a look at the Australian rally, the penultimate rally. So join us for that. Until then, farewell.